A watch essentially consists of three key sub-assemblies. The escapement and balance wheel assembly is responsible for time regulation. The gears, synonymous with a watch movement, are responsible for transferring force from the power reserve to the escapement and the power reserve itself is where the energy is stored to drive the watch. In a mechanical watch this is done with a spring contained in a barrel. In my watch I'm actually using two barrels to increase the stored energy which is useful to help drive the tourbillon. But we need a way to position and support these barrels in the watch movement. The component responsible for this is called the barrel bridge and that's what we're making in this video. The barrel bridge begins life as a disc of brass faced and lapped flat before it's transferred to the pantograph ready to be shaped into the bridge. As you may be familiar from our previous videos, the pantograph allows me to copy the shape of a scaled up template into the metal, but it's been requested that I talk more about the template design itself. So let's have a more detailed look at the template here. I 3D print my templates from PLA and I usually try to use the largest scale ratio I can. This is usually around 10 to 1, but in this case the template is 6 times bigger than the final component. The holes you see here need to be precisely sized in the final part and although the pantograph can give surprisingly accurate results, I prefer to play it safe and machine these undersized to be finished later. These two holes will be exactly 1mm in the final part, which is the same size as the milling cutter I will be using, so I've chamfered them in the template at 60 degrees so my 60 degree pantograph stylus engages rigidly with these holes. These smaller holes provide me with fixing locations to bolt the template directly to the optical breadboard I've fitted to the pantograph. These two holes will be clearance holes for two screws to hold the component to the main plate, so the tolerance is not too critical and they can be made to nominal size straight on the pantograph. The baffle around the outside is useful to constrain the cutter when cutting the recess. With the template bolted to the table, the next task is to set the correct scale on the arms. The workpiece is then bolted to the machine bed and raised up to the cutter. I've recently designed this compressed air nozzle which bolts to the spindle housing. This device blasts a stream of compressed air at the cutter when milling to help clear away chips and I've found it makes a huge difference to the surface finish. Using this method I can achieve an almost polished finish. Before we begin machining the recess, I will follow the outline of the template to help illustrate how the part will be formed. I'm not going to cut out the shape yet because the recess and the holes will still need to be machined first. To make the recess I swap to a 2mm milling cutter which needs a 12mm diameter stylus. This is a simple job to machine on the lathe. I begin by taking a light cut to check the recess looks good before moving to 0.5mm deep cuts to move material more quickly. With my right hand I move the stylus around the recess area in the template within the bounds of the space. It's just like colouring in and it's really good fun. The cutting forces can be felt through the stylus in my right hand but they are relatively subtle so it's very easy to move the stylus around with one hand. This does mean that if I move my hand too quickly the cutter can break, so I take my time and move to a more systematic rastering approach rather than the random scribbling I began with. Unlike when I follow the outline or make holes, I have no guide for my right hand here, apart from the baffles around the edges. I've considered 3D printing a serpentine groove within the template to guide my hand when rastering, but then I would need to use a smaller diameter stylus so the cutter can overlap with each subsequent cut and then the bounds of the recess will be incorrectly positioned. The template could be designed to compensate for the smaller stylus but this seemed like more effort than just taking my time at the machining stage. I make my final pass to bring the recess to the correct depth, 
but I follow the contours of the shape instead of rastering to give a pleasing finishing pattern. This will be the final finish in the watch, although it won't be visible when the watch is assembled. I then cut the holes for the bearings, and I also use the opportunity to machine pleasing cutouts in the bridge arms. George Daniels, whose watches I'm basing mine off, left his bridges without cutouts here, but I've always thought that this was a missed opportunity to skeletonize the movement and allow a better view of the barrels. I noticed famous watchmaker Derek Pratt also chose to skeletonize his barrel bridges, so I'm not alone here. The recess we just machined is quite deep, so I had to hack away some material around the periphery of the component to clear the cutter shank before I can finish the outline of the part. This was an oversight, and I should have ordered a long series cutter instead, because this led to a mistake, where I accidentally let the cutter shank interfere with the unrecessed portion of the bridge, on both sides no less. I thought about starting again, but decided that a chamfer on this edge would not look out of place, and would conveniently hide this embarrassing aberration. Of course, this meant I could not completely cut the part away from the stock on the pantograph, and I had to revert to using a piercing saw. Now I began the deburring and beveling process. I might make these bevels larger, but for now I'm keeping them subtle. I wasn't able to make the holes their full depth on the pantograph, so I mount the component on the lathe and drill and bore them to the final size. The centre hole is supposed to be 3.5mm nominal. I bored it on the large side of this by a couple of microns or so. This hole will accept the winding arbor, so I will be making it to fit, it's just easier to do this by measurement. The less critical holes, such as the clearance holes for screws, I drill and ream instead. This saves me some time, and it's good practice for the screws to have a small amount of slop anyway. The next step is to make recesses for the screws. 
Usually a watchmaker will use a counterbore for this job, but I see no reason why this can't be bored instead, which I think is a more accurate and more controllable method. I measure the depth of the counterbore with my lathe dials and check the diameter with a 3 point bore micrometer. As before, I make sure it's slightly over nominal size. Once all the holes are carefully bored to size, the part is finished for now. I will fit the bearings into the holes at the last possible stage to reduce the risk of dirt ingress. I would like to say thank you to our patrons who make projects like this possible, with a special mention to our pioneer patrons. Thanks for watching.